Oh, just found this laying on the surface and got the signal and looked down and there it was. I got started wiping it off and I can see a maker's mark of some sort. It's like CR Harris Rat uh, with a patent date of maybe 1901, May of 1901. Well, that's pretty cool. It's just laying on the surface. That's definitely got some age to it. And, Good sign, really good sign. Uh, right next to the hole, that's the hole right there. And working out this way, and yeah, there we go. Some iron, and uh, what else? Uh, another lantern piece, I'll show you guys that later. But I'm gonna get back to swinging and get back to you at the next hole, hopefully. Yeah, well. <clears throat> Welcome back. Just walking back or working back towards my bag and got a decent signal. I think it was like a 60 in the 60s and I've uh, just been finding lots of iron. Uh, but then I got this decent signal and I started kicking the leaves away and I saw this bottle so I thought we'd pick it up together. I haven't picked it up yet. I'm pretty sure it's intact. So we're about to find out together and let's see. What I was hearing, so, yeah, I was hearing that, and maybe, cool, I think, I think it's in, yeah, good shape, sweet, this is a little heart, Harris, Harris Pure Flavors, Let's see. Buchanan? Er, yeah, made in New York. That's cool. Really cool. I like it. Looks like. Yeah. And then the first right next to it. Too bad that's broken. That would have been a cool bottle. Pottery. That's just a clip there. I've been seeing lots of glass, but that was the first intact bottle I've seen, so that's cool. Catch you later. That was my next target. A decent one, anyway. Dug some more iron. And this here is your basic, normal cellar hole spoon. Mangled one. Uh, it looks like a, there's some kind of a hallmark on there. Silver Plate Company, I can't remember the first name, it's like Myers or something, but <clears throat> that's probably early 1900s, but still kind of a cool find. Look at that, that's just, that's so sad, so sad. Oh, that have been beautiful, but I think I may have found the bottle dump, I don't know. Uh, all sorts of glass right here. All sorts of stuff in that crock. Oh man, that sucks. That, I'm still taking this one. That's really cool. Pinyon, New York. That is pretty local to here. That is really cool. And um, another piece. I think it goes right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That is cool. Oh, I gotta find the rest of this. I'm gonna look for the rest of this. I'll get back to you. Here's another surface find. Harmonica reed. Stuff's just laying on the ground here. That's pretty cool. I always like finding them. Oh, catch you at the next one. Alright, this is kind of cool, guys. Uh, this, if this is what I think it is, you, you don't find these at cellar holes too much, but uh, if you don't know what that looks like, but. To me, that looks like a frame for a tin type or a dirge type, uh, ambro type. That's what it looks like. It really does. And I'm trying to, uh, looks like the elements got to it too much because of that broken glass. But it could be an old photo. 
I'm going to uh, clean this up when I get home and I hope that's a photo or, or uh, an image. Uh, if that's an image, I'm, I'm going to be staring. Oh, I'm okay. well, That might make it easier to look at it, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, kind of looks like you can see a face there, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. But either way, that it's a different find, I guess. All right, back. I cleaned it up a little bit more, and if you look in there. That's definitely an old image. I mean, look. If you look pretty close there, you can see the the design in the brass case for the image. That's cool. I'm really excited to have found that. I hope there's something left of that image. That would be amazing because that, that that could be a picture of the owner of the cellar hole, the people that lived here, their family, something like that. That's, that's cool. I'm really excited to have dug that. Catch you later. Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick little a uh, bit of information on uh, this find, uh, which did turn out to be a uh, an image, uh, an antique image or photo, uh, and it was a daguerreotype, which is a form of photography from the mid 1800s <clears throat> that, that where they used a uh, metal copper plate and they silver plated it which is what this was, because I took it out, and... I uh, gave the plate a cleaning, which probably wasn't the best idea, but uh, the curiosity was killing me, so I cleaned it. Uh, I didn't clean the glass, but I did glue the glass back together, uh, and put everything back together, because I just took this little brass frame off, and there's uh, other brass frame in there, than the plate. And then this little frame kind of holds it all together on the side here, which unfortunately I did break when I was uh, taking it apart, but it was really fragile. And it rang really high, but that's because there's all sorts of metals here. There's copper, brass, and even the silver plating, so. Uh, the image was gone, unfortunately. Uh, Apparently with the ambrotypes, they just don't uh, survive time so well uh, against even air. And with this, this glass was broken for a long time, so the image was long gone. But that process uh, was used from the 1830s, I believe 1839, to about 1860, but it was still used during the Civil War, but not as widely as, say, tin types like those. Uh, as well as this, this is a, that's a neat image. Uh, that is a Civil War bucktail musician, uh, Pennsylvania bucktail. He's got a sword and a sidearm in there. But that's a glass plate, which is an amber type, which is done with the, pretty much the same process as a derge type, but on glass, I believe. Uh, and then tin types, uh, similar process, but there, uh, something about it is different. I don't know the specifics, unfortunately. But, uh, so that's an amber type with a glass plate, derge type. And then these are CDVs, uh, or carte de visite, I believe is the actual uh, term. Uh, but the acronym is CDV, and they're most commonly referred to as CDVs. And these ones, are uh, uh, kind of like they're mass produced type CDVs. You could get a CDV of yourself, uh, but these ones are, CD are real pictures of these guys, but uh, they were kind of mass produced and sold kind of like as early, say, baseball card type, you know, collectible uh, souvenir things. And this one is of General McClellan which is a pretty neat one that I have in my collection. Uh, that's about the photography studio. And this one is uh, General R.S. Garnett. I want to say it was uh, Richard uh, or Robert. I 
unfortunately don't remember, but this isn't the one of Gettysburg fame. This is his brother, uh, who was a general in the Confederate Army, so that's a neat image. And general, which I think was an honorary title, uh, General Tom Thumb and his bride in their wedding costumes. This is a CDV uh, drawing type, just like that one where it was taken from a tin type. So it's real image, but kind of like a plate etch. But that's a neat collectible one. He was, uh, he worked, he was one of uh, P.T. Barnum's earliest employees. And uh, one of the reasons P.T. became so famous in later life, or infamous. And that's just a tin type of a uh, wife and a daughter that could possibly be a morning dress or a morning photo say uh, morning a uh, loss of a uh, their husband and her father possibly this one i'm almost certain is a morning uh tin type <clears throat> she's dressed all in black and it was common back then to uh take pictures like this because uh it was to remember your lost ones, basically. They would even take pictures of the dead bodies because sometimes that would be the only image they had. And that's just a random guy. I like, I collect these. And a baby. A chunky one. But, yeah. So, I'm really happy I found this. And that's a neat image. Uh, really cool find in a cellar hole because knowing at one point that this probably belonged to or, or this was a picture of somebody that lived there you know it doesn't get much more personal than that and this is a really cool find and here we are with the rest of the finds uh, from this last hunt uh it wasn't my best day but I still had fun and did find some cool stuff. Uh, obviously, my favorite was the uh, Derrida type, but we did get, you know, plenty of other cool stuff. Like the S crack. Broken, but still cool. Uh, did some research on the, the artist, uh, and then as Probably circa 1860, so mid 1800s. So that was pretty cool to find. And that was a four gallon craft pottery jug or you know, yeah, pot or something. Anyway, uh, a shard of it. That, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go into that, but it still had that blue on it. I like that. And that was just a interesting piece of glass it's a purple oh, that's neat uh, and the lanterns the usual the top to one the spoon broken spoon or fork the suspender clip Another bit of suspender. Broken pocket knife. That's a cup. So it was a enamel layer at one point. And the bottle we saw. And this I found a little later. A uh, little milk bottle. With a complete with its own ecosystem but yeah so picking through the trash there I guess and I think eventually we'll start getting into the good stuff there uh, still a good hunt you gotta pick through this stuff and I mean half of this stuff was just seriously surface finds it was, it was ridiculous but cool uh, but yeah probably won't be uploading videos like on a too regular of a basis probably maybe once a week maybe every other week uh, 
you know, whenever I can get out. Uh, and only if I, you know, feel I have enough to put a video together. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Mick Digger. Happy hunting. Catch you later.